while also retaining their internal autonomy. A GLUE grant will be set aside for this purpose. For accessible higher education in Ladakh, I propose to set up a central university in Leh. Well, well. The other important projects to be taken up as a part of the NEP are listed in Annexure 5. Scheduled caste and scheduled tribes welfare. We have set ourselves a target of establishing 750 Eklavya model residential schools in our tribal areas. I propose to increase the unit cost of each such school from 20 crores, which is what it is now, to 38 crores, and for hilly and difficult areas, to 48 crores. This would help creating robust infrastructure facilities for our tribal students. We have revamped the post-metric scholarship scheme for the welfare of scheduled caste students. I have also enhanced the central assistance in this regard. We, have, we are allotting 35,219 crores for six years till 25-26 to benefit four crores scheduled caste students. Skilling. In 2016, we had launched the National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme. The government proposes to amend the Apprenticeship Act with a view to further enhancing apprenticeship opportunities for our youth. We will realign the existing scheme of National Apprenticeship Training Scheme for providing post-education apprenticeship, training of graduates and diploma holders in engineering. Over 3,000 crores will be provided for this purpose. An initiative is underway, Honorable Speaker, in partnership with the United Arab Emirates to benchmark skill qualifications assessment and certification, accompanied by the deployment of cert certified workforce. We also have a collaborative training intertraining program between India and Japan to facilitate transfer of Japanese industrial and vocational skills, techniques and knowledge. We will take forward this initiative with many more countries also. Innovation and R&D. In my budget speech of 2019, I had announced the National Research Foundation. We have now worked, worked out the modalities and the NRF outlay will be of 50,000 crores over five years. It will ensure that the overall research ecosystem in the country is strengthened with focus on identified national priority thrust areas. There has, been a manifold in, there, there has been a manifold increase in digital payments in the recent past. To give a further boost to digital transactions, I earmark 1,500 crores for a proposed scheme that will provide financial incentive to promote digital mode of payment. We will undertake a new initiative, National Language Translation Mission. This will enable the wealth of governance and policy-related knowledge on the Internet being made available in major Indian languages. The new Space India Limited, a PSU, under the Department of Space, will execute the PSLV CS. 51 launch carrying the um, Amazonia satellite from Brazil along with a few smaller Indian satellites. As part of the Gaganyaan mission activities, four Indian astronauts are being trained on generic space flight aspects in Russia. The first unmanned launch is slated for December 2021. Our oceans are a storehouse of living and non-living resources. To better understand this realm, we will launch a deep ocean mission with a budget outlay of more than 4,000 crores over five years. Then this mission will cover 
deep ocean survey exploration and projects for the conservation of deep sea biodiversity. I come to the sixth pillar, Honorable Speaker, minimum government, maximum governance. Honorable Speaker, sir, this is the last of the six pillars. This will outline plans for reforms in one of our core principles of minimum government, maximum governance. We have taken a number of steps to bring reforms in tribunals in the last few years for speedy delivery of justice. Continuing with the reforms process, I now propose to take further measures to rationalize the functioning of tribunals. We have introduced the National Commission for Allied Healthcare Professionals Bill in Parliament. National Commission for Allied Healthcare Professionals Bill in the Parliament. With a view to ensure transparent and efficient regulation of 56 allied healthcare professionals. Additionally, to bring about transparency, efficiency, and governance reforms in the nursing profession, the National Nursing and Midwifery Commission Bill will be introduced by the government for passing. To have ease of doing business for those who deal with government or CPSCs and carry out contracts, I propose to set up a conciliation mechanism and mandate it its use for quick resolution of contractual disputes. This will instill confidence in private investors and contractors. Honorable Speaker, sir, the forthcoming census could be the first digital census in the history of India. For this monumental milestone marking task, I have allocated 3,768 crores in this year, 21-22. Honorable Speaker, Goa is celebrating the Diamond Jubilee Year of the state's liberation from Portuguese rule. From the Government of India's side, I propose to grant 300 crores to the Government of Goa for the celebration. I propose to provide 1,000 crores for the welfare of tea workers, especially women and children in Assam and West Bengal. A special scheme will be devised for the same. Fiscal position. Fiscal position. In these last few paragraphs, in these last few paragraphs of part A of my speech, I draw the attention of this August House to the fact that at the beginning of the current financial year, the pandemic's impact on the economy resulted in a weak revenue flow, weak revenue inflow. This was combined with high expenditure to provide essential relief to vulnerable sections of the society, especially the poor, the women, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Unlike many other countries, we opted for a, serious, for a series of medium-sized packages during the pandemic so that we could calibrate and target our response according to the evolving situation. Once the health situation stabilized and the lockdown was being slowly lifted, we switched to ramping up government spending so as to revive domestic demand. As a result, against, as a result, against an original BE expenditure of 30.42 lakh crores for 2020-21, our RE estimates are 34.50 lakhs, 34 lakhs. 30.42 now within the year going up to 34.5 lakh crores. We have maintained quality of expenditure. The capital expenditure estimated in the RE is 4.39 lakh crores as against 4.12 lakh crores in the BE stage. 
to the beginning of the year, we had marked only 4.12 lakh, whereas it is 4.39 lakh crores as we end the year.